I think I've got all the position right. Sorry about that, guys. Um, first off, I want to apologize for I Stampin' Live not happening um, yesterday. It's spring break. Uh, my schedule's just really crazy this week. Just completely, just uh, there really is no schedule. So I apologize for that. Um, I also want to put a little disclaimer that um, my whole family's home right now. Both kids are off school. My husband's home. So... A, I hope it's not too loud, and B, I hope I don't get any interruptions. So if uh, if all that happens, we're doing good. Okay, anyway, now that we got that out of the way, I have this cute little um, basket bunch box to show you today. It is just so much fun. I think it's perfect for little Easter treats. Um, you know, if you don't celebrate Easter, uh, you can use this for... Um, you know, like a baby shower, uh, you know, children's parties, if you do like little party favors and things like that. So, um, you know, I always try to encourage my customers to think out of the box if you uh, maybe not necessarily celebrate that particular uh, occasion, uh, holiday, religion, you know, whatever it may be. So we're going to be showing, I'm going to be showing you how to do that. And I also want to let you all know that I have an ordering incentive um, for this project. So uh, if you place a Stampin' Up! order in my online store of $50 or more um, between now and Monday night at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time, you will receive the make and take packet to uh, recreate this. So you're going to receive the PDF instructions. Um, along with all of the uh, consumables to make this project. Um, as always, if your order is $150 or more, you don't want to use the hostess code, but if you do place that order during the incentive period, you'll get this for free. And um, just as a reminder, your minimum order does need to be $50 before tax and shipping. So there's the hostess code, and I'll just put that off to the side, and um, you can uh, refer back to that. So uh, let's get started. This is really easy and just so much fun. So what you're going to want to do is to cut a piece of pink pirouette designer series paper. Um, this is coming from our Subtles collection. So this measures 8 by 8 and so uh, and you want to make sure that it's double sided. This here, you see that I used our polka dot pattern that has some text on it. So I thought today for the Facebook Live that I would use the other pattern. And I think I'm going to go with the stripes as the outside, and then the floral will be the, um, the little accent piece. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is to get out your envelope punch board. This is how we're going to create the box. And it's really simple. Um, like I said, if you... Uh, place your order and use that hostess code, all of the directions will be included. But the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to place your paper at the one and a half inch mark. Okay? And then you're just going to push down on that punch. And I'm left-handed, so I am going to do this a little bit different than you right-handed people. For me, I, kind of, I have to turn mine sideways so that I can score. And then what you're going to do is you're going to score at the one half inch mark. And the paper is longer than the scoreboard, but just score it until you um, can't score anymore. And you'll be able to fold this piece, so don't worry about that. Then we're going to rotate it. And now we're going to move it to the two and a half inch mark. And we're going to press on the button and then score. If I can find that score mark. There we go. All right, and then we're going to rotate it again, and we're going to go back to the one half inch mark. Punch and then score. And then one more time, rotate it again and go to the two and a half inch score or mark. Punch and then score again. Now put your um, punch board off to the side. We're not done yet, but what we want to do is fold on all of our score lines so that we will 
be able to see my phone folder that we will be able to see where our lines are because we have a little bit more scoring to do. So just where the score mark stop on stopped on that long, just gently just follow your score line and go ahead and fold the rest and you shouldn't have any problem getting a straight line. Fold this side. Okay, so that's what our box is going to look like now. So what we want to do is bring back in our punch board, our envelope punch board. And what you will do is see this little this little marker right here. You're going to line that up with your score line. So that's why we want to fold it to make it a little bit easier to see. You're going to punch and then you're going to score. And you're going to do that on all four sides. So here we're going to line up where we scored with the little tail. We're going to punch and then score. So on two sides the flap will be skinny and then the other side they will be larger. So if you if yours is doing that, then you're doing it right. Okay, so we rotate the last time, line it up with that score mark, punch, and then score. Okay, so we are all done with the punch board. You can just clean up your mess. Alright, now let's go ahead and fold on those last four score marks that we made. And these two little flaps, those are going to go on the inside. And then these flaps we're going to turn around and those are going to show on the outside. And so that's going to be our cute little floral pattern. So that's what it's going to look like. Alright, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to cut up from the large flaps that fold over. On either side there's a score mark, so you're going to cut up from here to that score line. You're going to do that on both sides. Let's just grab your scissors. And this is a really quick box to make, so if you want to make quite a few of these, uh, it shouldn't take you any time to make this. Even if you want to use your trimmer, you can do that. If you want to make sure that you get really clean cuts, I recommend that. It's, it would be easy to use. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and grab our tear and tape. That's what we're going to use to close everything because this is a box. Um, you'll want to use something a little bit, uh, has a little bit better adhesive than just like say for instance snail. If you um, prefer fast fuse, go ahead and use that. I'm just going to put a couple of strips on these flaps and just use my scissors to get off that backing strip. I've got a fun uh, question going on on my Facebook page, so um, if you haven't seen it, I'm asking a question about the end colors that are retiring. So if you haven't seen it, head on over to uh, my Facebook page, which is istampin.com, just istampin on um, Facebook, and you'll have to answer uh, the question. I'm going to do a little, a little random drawing at the end of the month. For everyone who answers, you'll uh, go into that drawing. But uh, I'm always curious. Ha, 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 I think I had mentioned it has to do with the end colors. So I'm always curious what what everybody's favorite color is and, and which ones they're going to be sad to see retire. All right, so now I'm just putting tear and tape on these flaps that we are going to be 
uh, folding down. Let's see here. Find the end. Okay. I'll just hide this. I have a little bit of tear and tape that extended, so let's fold that back. And then here you can see that's how our box is going to um, close. <laughs> For some reason, my box is a little high on some of these sides. I'm not quite sure what happened. I'm just going to cut this down. It never fails when I do something live. It's not, it doesn't look perfect. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what happened. This side's the way it's supposed to be. This side's something's wrong, but anyway, so we'll make this the front. Like I said, it never fails. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put tape um, on the sides to build up the wall. And what you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to put tape right here on this side because that is what's going to close the box, if you can see that. So go ahead and put tape on the bottom section of all four panels. Okay, let's do this other one. All right. So what we will, whoops, I got one more. So what you're going to do is just carefully just match the side, the sides and get those seams as clean as possible. So that's what it looks like when it's all done. So you definitely want the front of the box to be the, the cleanest part. So um, isn't that cute? All right, so let's decorate it. I'm going to show you how I did that fun little embellishment. I am using the Basket Bunch bundle. And so in the bundle, you get the stamp set as well as the builder framelits. And you can see all of these cute little framelits that come in this collection. And this is just, it's just so sweet. You're going to want to get out the little bunny framelit. That's the one that we'll be using. And I am going to be stamping the bunny on our shimmery white paper. Now I know on um, video you probably will not be, I know you won't be able to tell that this is shimmery, but in person it's really cute. It has a nice, a nice little sparkle to it. Got my bunny stamp. So you want to pull out this little guy right here. And I'm going to use um, my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm going to do some coloring. So this is just the ink of choice. That I like so we're just gonna stamp him right down there and then the two colors that I've chosen to do a little bit of coloring is pink pirouette and mint macaron if you want to use the water coloring pencils you can um, I thought about it but these where I'm coloring it's just it's a really small space so I thought that the Stamp and write markers would be the easiest. So I'm just going to come in and just gently just color in the inside of his ears. And with this paper, you don't want to um, rub too hard because it can pill. And because you're in such a small space coloring, it doesn't really take a whole lot of pressure uh, to you know for the ink to transfer to the paper. I'm going to just dot his nose just a couple of times just to give it a little bit of color. And then I came in here and just gave the bunny some rosy cheeks, just right where the whiskers are. Just come in and get 
give it a little color. And now I'm going to color the bow tie with the mint macaron. Again, you don't have to put a lot of pressure um, on the brush tip and for it to for it to color. So we have a, a thin end and then a thick end. So the thin end is, is perfect for journaling. All right, so next you'll do um, is just take your matching framelit and then take this on over to your Big Shot and cut this out. I've already got one made. So once we cut the bunny out, it's gonna look like that. I thought it would be fun to add a little pearl to the bow tie. So I'm just using the smallest pearls that we have on the um, package right here and that's just going to go right there in the center of the bow tie. I've also die cut some circles. I used our layering circles and the stitched shape circles. So what I did here is I've got a pink pirouette stitched circle and I used the um, the third largest, or the second smallest, I should say, the second smallest circle. And then I die cut, uh, this is all on the Big Shot, I die cut uh, a mint macaron glimmer um, scallop circle. And this is one of the uh, celebration items that you can choose. Um, celebration does end at the end of this month. So, um, oh, and that's the other thing is if you do the ordering incentive, you will be able to pick a, a celebration item. And that one, I used the third largest scallop. So there we go, so you can see that. And we are just going to layer that pink pirouette scallop right on top of the glimmer paper. And I like to use tear and tape for this. It really grabs onto that glitter and it doesn't come off. And so you'll just want to put that circle on and just make sure that all of your scallops are evenly showing all around. Isn't that bunny just absolutely adorable? I just think it's just so cute. I'm going to put him up on dimensionals. So what you're going to want to do is get two full-size dimensionals. Put one right in the center of his head and one down at the bottom of his body. And then for the ears, um, I just cut a dimensional in half. And that will support the rest of the die cut. And if you, let's see, I need to move this over just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now no dimensionals are showing. So just remove the backing strip, and then this is just going to go right there in the center of the pink pirouette circle. Okay, it's going to go just like that. Isn't that precious? And then from here, I'm just going to get put um, a few more dimensionals on the back. And then um, I'll show you at the end. To make the crinkle paper, I just took some uh, pink pirouette cardstock and just used my trimmer and just, uh, just cut really, really thin strips. That will just go right there. Look at that. So here, let me show you. So this crinkle paper here, I just cut really thin strips of the pink pirouette cardstock and just crumpled up in my hand. And then that, uh, you know, you'll be able to put like a little treat in there. So there's the polka dot version. There's the striped version. So you can let me know which one you like better. And then also let me show you this other version that I made. This is using our succulent garden of designer series paper and then I did um, you know I, I got the colors for the bow um, this is um, sweet sugar plum and calypso coral so I've got a sweet sugar plum uh, scallop circle so you can see a different version than the kind of the monochrome monochromatic color 
So there you have it, guys. It's just a really fun, simple box. And I really think that you'll enjoy making it. Like I said at the beginning, um, you know, you can use this for like baby showers, uh, you know, small children's birthday parties as a party favor because a, a nice size little treat fits right inside there. But anyway, so I hope you liked today's project. Um, let me show you the ordering incentive one more time so that you can get that. Of course, all of this will be on my blog post, so if you happen to miss this, um, you can head on over to iStampin.com. But here's the hostess code. And uh, like I said, if you um, use that hostess code between now and March 20th and spend $50 in my online store, you will get the uh, make and take packet for free. All right, guys. Well, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Give me some hearts. Uh, just let me know what you think. Oh, you like the stripe box. Oh, thanks, Diana. I kind of do, too. I don't know. I like them all. <laughs> oh, and then Tammy likes the polka dots. <laughs> That's the way it goes. All right, guys. Well, have a fabulous uh, St. Patrick's Day, a fabulous weekend, and join me next Thursday for I Stampin' Live. Thanks, guys. Bye.